Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me as usual is Martin Patella, life coach, health coach at lifeenthusiast.com. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, and maybe we should have switched it. You know, when we first formed the companies, we should have called it Health Enthusiast Company and Life Coach Martin. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, cool. So today we want to talk about a substance that uh, is really, really crucial to how our bodies work and it's needed for our bodies to work properly. N almost nobody ever talks about it. And it's, and I think the reason is, is if you watch any of the horror shows on TV or the horror movies and they have demons or vampires or monsters, the one thing that uh, they talk about and either there is a smell after the demon has been there, or they use it to vanquish the demon, depending on which movie or show you're watching, is sulfur. And so, Martin, why is sulfur so important to our overall health? There are major ingredients and minor ingredients, or major elements and minor elements. We, we are mainly made of water, right, H2O. The foods that we ingest, carbohydrates, that's carbon and hydrogen, fats, that's carbon, hydrogen, and what the heck is the third <laughs> element? Oxygen. And then if you want to make a protein, you add nitrogen to it. And then some proteins also add the sulfur. And uh, that's looking at it from the elemental perspective. But we also need to understand it from ionic perspective because sulfur can be in different ions like the hydrogen sulfate sulfite H2S. That's the sticky, stinky um, rotten egg smell that we associate with the volcanoes and the devils and all of that nastiness that you mentioned. There's another uh, sulfur component or ion called thiazol, which pardon me, I misspoke, sulfur is associated with sulfathiazole, sulfa drugs. These sort of components tend to, people have, some people have allergies to this. When we talk about bioavailable sulfur, it's the sulfonyl uh, ion, which is the form that you would find in garlic, in onion, in other vegetables like broccoli and whatnot. They do have a strong pungent smell to it, but it's quite different from the brimstone. Now you asked, why are they so important? Uh, they're really important in um, how oxygen gets transported across cellular barrier. So if you could visualize that each of your cells, the little golf balls that you're composed of, has a skin, and the skin is composed of a fatty acid layer, and that layer is semi-permeable, but it opens only in the right conditions. And sulfur is involved in helping oxygen to get from the outside of the cell back to the in or into the inside of the cell. So when it comes to energy, our mitochondria create the energy by burning glucose, or we call it sugar oftentimes, in presence of oxygen and converting the adenosine diphosphate into adenosine triphosphate, ADP into ATP, blah, blah. That's, a, that's probably too technical. So the, uh, the point is that you need oxygen inside the cell to convert food into energy. And sulfur is involved in helping get the oxygen from the outside to the inside. And if this is not working, you're going to be starved for energy. Okay. So if you wanted to do some cellular detoxing, if you wanted to make sure your oxygen that you're breathing in is being used properly in your body, what about things like joint repair and, and maintenance? Is it Does it have a function there as well? Oh, absolutely. It's involved in um, the construction of connective tissue. So if I have chronic aches or pains, then it's possible that I have a deficiency in sulfur. Right. Yes. When we have deficiency of, in sulfur, we don't repair as quickly as we would otherwise. 
So in my previous life, I was a grocery store manager, and this is 25 to 40 years ago. Uh, that was that period of time. Uh, we had carpal tunnel syndrome, which, well, that's what they called it. But basically, we had all these people with stuff on their arms, and mostly it was their wrists that, that yeah. they had the problem with. And so as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking that is very repetitive. You know, that it was very repetitive work that they did. Yeah, RSI, repetitive stress injury. Yeah. So they probably were lacking in sulfur. Good chance. In fact, uh, this MSM is the important component in many of the products we have that are involved in repairing uh, chronic tissue damage. We have recovery, as you remember, and that that thing has a tagline of freedom to move. Recovery is a 50% of the capsule is MSM, and the rest is the other ingredients. And similar, uh, in, I didn't know that. similar in the product called Platinum Plus Amino Acids, which is free for aminos and few other ingredients, and again, 50% MSM. And yet another one, famous one that we have called Zymetol, uh, that also is 50% MSM, this time mixed with uh, um, fibrinolytic enzymes. So for instance, with the fibri fibrinolytic enzyme, this is used for sports injuries or repairs. Like fibrin or fibrin is the uh, scar tissue that the body makes to quickly repair something that's been damaged. So if you over overstress or over exercise, you cause yourself pain in the muscles. Like when you're pushing weights, you hurt the next day. People who want to train harder without hurting, take something like the Zymetol, the fibrinolytic enzyme with the sulfur, which gives them energy, sp speedier repair, and no scarring. Of course, you can use it for right. other things like fibroid tumors and uh, scars, stretch marks, that sort of thing. So something <laughs> like the MSN is made of about 34% organic sulfur in the sense it simply means, doesn't mean it's like an organic carrot, it means it's bound to a carbon so that right. our body can use it. It's not like a rock, it's something that can be absorbed. Uh, yes, right. So to explain that, it's a methyl sulfonyl methane. And the methane is a CH4, methyl is a CH3, and sulfonyl is the sulfur and oxygen, whatnot. And what we need to understand is the concept of methylation. This has been be has been becoming more known in the mainstream now that People who have methylation genetic damage, it's called MTHFR, uh, which stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is a specific enzyme that helps us methylate. And to methylate means to activate a specific protein. So some of us, including me, are genetically mutated in such way that we don't methylate as well as others. And so we, our uh, ability to convert, convert food into energy is lower and our ability to de de detoxify is lower. I mean, there are some positive things about it, like uh, you get uh, linguistic skills, high achievers, musical talents, uh, all kinds of positive things, but you get with it this uh, inability to uh, to run long distances or uh, or work physically with without exhausting yourself fairly quickly. So anyway, MTHFR is the mutation associated with a lot of this kind of uh, chronic inflammatory problems that people have in the family of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and related. So will the, fi will the uh, sulfur help with that process? Absolutely. 
Well, the sulfur is involved with the oxygen and the methyl ion in the MSM is involved in donating itself to the methylation. So you get two benefits, the methyl ions and the sulfur so that you will improve your oxygen processing and your methylation processing. So more energy, less tired. I mean, chronic fatigue is a nasty thing that debilitates a lot of people. And I, I get stories back uh, with, you're telling me it was this simple, two teaspoons of this stuff a day, and I no longer drag. I, I no longer need to stay in bed until noon. I, I have full access to full energy. Yes, yes, and yes. It's that simple. Well, it's Martin, that why don't we uh, show the product that we're talking about, which is the Gaia Thera uh, in this end. And it's a beautiful uh, blue bottle. Yeah, we made the label in our own shop. We buy this thing in bulk from uh, a company in uh, Washington State. They are the largest manufacturer of MSM in the United States. Their trade name is called Opti MSM. I think it's a play on the play, play on the word optimism, and uh, it's guaranteed clean and it's guaranteed effective. And uh, they make two versions. They make a version for putting in capsules and version for using as powder. And the powdered version is nothing but the sulfur and pure as can be. The other version for capsules has uh, excipients added to it, primarily silicon dioxide to make it flow into capsules. We have opted for uh, uh, packaging it without beach sand. So Martin, what this? So let us warn everybody: if you love sweets, you are not going to be that keen about Opti MSN, MSM because uh, it's a bit bitter. So how would you recommend someone take it? Well, uh, the, I think you're underplaying it a bit. <laughs> I am a lot. <laughs> it's it's the most bitter tasting thing you'll find anywhere. However, it's not a big deal. You need to take a teaspoon, so you can mix teaspoon of it into a couple ounces of liquid. I use water. And just mix it, dissolve it. And I have two glasses, one with this and another glass with something that I like. And so I just knock back the two ounces of, of the MSM. I don't try to taste it because it's not worth it. And then I take something else to, um, to put something pleasant in my mouth. Because this is not. Right. And I think that's probably <clears throat> the only way that – you actually said two things that I wanted to bring, bring up and just emphasize. One was take it fast with like two ounces. Of, so it's basically a shot. Yes. And it's, it's like the Buckley's cough syrup or whatever. It, it tastes terrible, but it works, right? Yep. And you kind of have to look at it that way. Is This is my medicine. I'm going to have more energy, my oxygen, my detoxing. All that stuff is going to work better because <clears throat> there's a pretty high um, likelihood that almost everybody is deficient in sulfur. Yes. I think, you know, it's pretty safe to say that. And so this is just a way of getting back to what is normal from a deficiency state. And <clears throat> it's like your medicine or it's you know, the cough syrup that Buckley is, you know, it tastes terrible, but it's going to work. And I think you really have to do it that way. The other thing is, is you do over time develop a taste for it. I don't, I don't want to say it's like a taste for it, but like it, it's not so bad. Yeah, you, you hate know, it less. <laughs> you hate it less, right? Like, uh, I remember the first time I had one of the other Exila products and I just put it in water, stirred it up and drank it. I was like, ah, and then it was like, I, I don't know, a year later, six months later, maybe even three months later, I, I drank it. And I said, Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't taste as bad as I remember. Right. Mm -hmm. When I thought back to the first time that I had it. And of course, when we have a diet that's predominantly ice cream and Coca-Cola and juices and that sort of thing, then you're going to have a bit of a problem with, uh, something that is not, it's tart, <laughs> the only way to put it, without the sweeteners to, to make it go down easy, right? Like Mary Poppins, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. You know, well, 
there really ain't no spoonful of sugar in the MSM. No. Uh, you got to take it quickly. But when you continue to to do it, your body, you, first of all, you feel better. So that helps you to continue to do it because you notice differences. And the other part of it is, of course, is over time, your taste buds get used to this stuff. And so you don't have the reaction that you may have the first time. So this is where you have to do a little bit of work to have a healthy life. You know, we know what doing no work brings us. It brings us excess diabetes. It brings us two thirds of the population being obese. It brings us one in two people having cancer or heart attacks and one in three having the other one. I forget which way it is. It brings us, you know, one in 55 children having autism. I mean, we have all of these like epidemics going on because of our lifestyle and what we put in our mouth. And so sometimes when we're putting chocolate cake in our mouth all the time and we're getting fat and we're getting sick, maybe we should put something else in our mouth and maybe it's not going to taste as good as the chocolate cake, but it's going to do a lot of good. Right. It's important to note the following. You need a sufficient quantity of it. Normal adult dose is five grams twice a day. That's a whole teaspoon twice a day. Uh, wow, if, I didn't know that. If you have capsules, typical capsules are 500 milligram. The really big ones are 1,000 milligram. But if you're using the typical capsules, that would mean 10 in the morning and 10 in the evening. So it's better to uh, just do it using the powder. It's, so, it's, Martin, when I put this into my drink, into my shot, I push it down. Yeah. Am I going to, I was just, I was just thinking, like, am I going to have, what about, you know, what about like a reaction, a rash or no. something no. like that? No, no. I, I don't know of anything. Oh, okay. Let me think. Uh, early on, you may have some gurgling in the digestive system. As you start feeding sulfur into your digestive system, different microbes are going to get support that they didn't used to have before. So you could have a few days of a um, something going on in the belly. Would I have a, like a tummy ache? I'm not going to get a headache. No, it's more, like, it's more like you may get flatulence. Okay. I've had some people who complained of aches. So I just tell them, well, please persevere. Three, four days, it'll pass. Now, would you maybe take a little bit less? And that, I guess that's the thing, right? If you're yes. finding you're having a reaction, like, you know, farting all the time or something like that, and you have to go out, you know, cut it back a little bit and then work your way up. But that's not a normal situation. Normally, people have no, they just take it and it's like, okay, I took it. I got some sulfur. Now I'm starting to feel more energetic. I'm detoxing maybe a little bit more than I was. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So there, there we have it. So okay. when, when would I want to use it? For almost any inflammatory condition and any uh, immune challenge condition. So, of course, that, that puts it right into that list that you mentioned. Heart disease is an inflammatory condition. Skin conditions, cancer is an immune challenge. Joint pain, arthritis, osteo, and other. Um, GERD, if you can believe it. Acid indigestion, that can be related. Uh, liver issues, of course, and then the uh, mental issues, ADD, hyperactivity, mood swings, depression, that sort of stuff. All of these conditions are um, improved on when you get the MSM into your body. All right, cool. So is there anything else we want to talk about? Like we talked a little bit about... Uh modern diseases, but what about uh, cellular regeneration? Okay, yeah, sulfur is really, really important and involved in cellular regeneration, which means uh, cellular degeneration is aging, regeneration is renewal. So if you want to age slower or perhaps even reverse some of the damage that you caused yourself, then this will help. Okay, so in North Vancouver, a place that I'm close to live, where I live close to, don't live there, on my way, I see this huge yellow pile mm -hmm. yes. that's going to be put onto a ship and sent off. And that's what I think of sulfur. Yes, but that's correct. That's pure sulfur. Pure sulfur. 
But the MSN, and of course, it's it's a mineral. Yeah. So if I was to jump into that pile, I mean, it's massive, and start, blah, 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 no. I, it would be not, it wouldn't work for me at all because no. it's not bioavailable, right? No, the, the thing that you would likely produce is sulfuric acid, which is also known as the battery acid, which uh, is not something you want to necessarily play with. So the MSM, MSM, I don't know why I put an N there, MSM in a bioavailable state, what color is it? Is it yellow too? No, no, it's pure white crystalline, looks like sugar or salt healing. It really speeds up healing fast. So when we're talking about this sulfur, we're talking about an elemental sulfur, right? As opposed to That's the, the yellow element. stuff that you mentioned, yeah. The elemental is, because I'm just wondering, because as you were talking, it occurred to me that when you have um, volcanoes and volcanic eruptions, you, there's a lot of sulfur, and there's a lot of, of minerals and everything that gets spewed because of it. But yeah. uh, it occurred to me that one of the things that causes the quick healing, because people will say, wow, like there was a volcanic ex volcanic explosion two, two years ago, and it just decimated this whole 100 square miles. And today, yeah. two years later, it's there's plants growing like crazy. And it occurred to me that the sulfur deposits that, that we get onto the land yeah. is part of our nature's sul uh, Cycle, yeah, of renewal and renewal, right? Yeah. I so don't know if we could uh, point directly to sulfur alone, because of course, when you push out volcanic ash, you have all the minerals. Which, of course, the plants need all of the minerals, not just the sulfur. But it certainly is important, right? And so you'd you'd also talked a little bit about, um, I think, enzymes and amino acids. But you know, like amino acids, amino acids are our body's building blocks. We require a lot of those. Yes. And how much of them are sulfur? Like I, I've heard about 70% are sulfur-based. Yes, that is right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're correct. Some amino acids are without sulfur, but many require sulfur as one of its building blocks. So as you're manufacturing the building blocks of life in your body, you require the necessary nutrients, and sulfur is one of them. And it's not readily present in the foods you eat. So supplementing it is going to make a big positive impact. Okay. So there are different types of, let's call it organic sulfur, in that it's available to, the, to plants and humans and animals to be absorbed. Mm -hmm. But the best type is the one that's from the DMS O1 and the DMSO2. Right. Which, which is the, just one oxygen of the MSM. If you uh, oxygenate the DMSO, you end up with the MSM. And so it's it's nearly identical to the body. Okay. Cool. You want to talk a little bit about the sulfur study? Yeah, it was Patrick McGeehan who did it, and it started in 1999. And right. it was because there was this fatal type of cancer, and they started noticing that it really responded well to sulfur. Right. We actually have a link to that on our website. I think it's important just to tell everybody kind of the, uh, the, the sort of the background of it. And, uh, I mean, that was uh, – it was kind of an interesting article because the U.S. government in 1954 told the agriculture industry to start using chemical fertilizers. And sulfur plays an important role in regenerating cells. And the chemical fertilizers had the if result not. of depleting sulfur in the soil. soil right. yeah. And in well, the soil, you know, I guess. Yeah, you know, what happens is the, in the soil, too. What happens is that you have... Uh, you're pushing NPK, which is nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. And you're not pushing everything else. And so these three are uh, responsible for the food growing fast, looking good. It has visual appeal, but it's fairly hollow on the inside. Like when you, when you cause it to grow faster than it would otherwise, grow bigger than it would otherwise, it, the appearance is lovely, but the nutritional content or the mineral content is diminished, much poorer than it has been. 
And so that's why supplementation is necessary because if you eat foods that have been produced using the industrial agricultural methods, it's automatically deficient in nutrients. Right. So some of the preliminary findings of the sulfur study, uh, and we've got the article on www.life-enthusiast.com, just search sulfur study, I'm sure you'll find it, was with cancer, uh, people that used chemotherapy and took 30 grams of sulfur, would that be two shots of sulfur? Or? That would be six teaspoons, a full ounce. Six, 60 spoons. So this uh, is three times as much as what I proposed for it. Right. Now. The chemo had no side effects. There was no hair loss, no nausea, no diarrhea, and their oncologist reported a great reduction in cancer cells. Lymphomas right. also responded to sulfur with decreased pain and size of tumors. So, I mean, you have to wonder why the, the cancer ward just doesn't have bottles and bottles and bottles of sulfur and pouring it down everybody's throats. Well, I'll explain that. This costs $20 for 20 ounces or $100 for a gallon. Seven pounds of this you can buy from us for 100 bucks. Uh, a tour of chemo is $10,000. So mm. the oncologist is just simply motivated to sell you the expensive stuff. Okay, so with arthritis, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, people just said they had less pain, increased mobility, straightening. Yeah, it, it will shrink the swollen. Yeah, sorry, Scott. It will shrink swollen joints. It will improve uh, flexibility. It's yeah, healing to the tendons, ligaments, joints, cartilage, all of that. And to talk to the uh, heart attack part, because I mentioned cancer and heart attack, and one is one in two, and one is one in three. Cardiovascularly, it yeah. regenerated blood blood vessels. It yes. re reduced scar tissue, which is really important. Right. High blood pressure came down, and uh, it broke up calcium plaque in arteries, which is, of course, what causes it blood not to go, right? Clogging, yeah. And then, of course, then there is the uh, uh, diabetes, you know, because... Uh, it uh, helps with hormonal and and um, helps you produce insulin. Yeah, and, and the amino acids from metabol metabol metab metab <laughs> metabolizing <laughs> blah, 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 heart carbohydrates. Well, so when you eat the carbohydrates, your body's got to do something with it. If you don't have sulfur, it's not going to do very much with it. Right. That's this was this is another way of saying the same thing as in conversion of food into energy. That's what this is. The sulfur helps your body to turn stuff you eat into energy you want to have. And, of course, when the conversion is poor, the, the starches or the glucose stays in circulation and uh, you have diabetes. next one we want to bring up is dear to my heart because as you know uh martin maybe people watching this don't know my liver stopped yeah and uh so one participant in the sulfur study regenerated his liver after suffering 25 years of hepatitis c which is the worst hepatitis there is i think and he took uh two tablespoons of sulfur twice a day for 15 months so this would be, you know, taking six teaspoons. That's what two tablespoons equal. So. 60 grams, you mean? 30 grams. Yeah. 30 grams, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be, I have some, and I've tried it a couple <laughs> times. And, uh, but you see, you never told me about the shot, right? Like, 
I had it in a glass like this big. And oh. then I would say, oh, it was terrible. But I can make a shot, throw it down, and then, like you said, just have some juice or water or lemon water or whatever you want. Yeah, just wash it down. Smoothie, wash coffee, wash it down. The next one on the list is parasites. So how would sulfur affect parasites? Uh, I think it has to do with the uh, lining. I think it has to do with the production of the mucus uh, layer and uh, just uh, increasing the resilience of the, uh, the tissues. Like It's sort of like being less friendly. You know, when you see parasite, when you see pestilence in fields, the pests attack crops that are weak that's true like i can all, one of my earliest memories on the farm with my uncle was it was a wheat farm so i mean it was just seeds of, of wheat right and we're at one corner of a section and the weed is all like it's perfect it's it's green it's not ready for harvest or anything like that and i look down and there's a little clump of of wheat that's sort of looking ugly, fallen over, and it's just being hammered by ants. And I looked at all the other wheat around it, and I thought, wow, like those ants are going after that wheat. And it was kind of like, there's two ways of looking at it, right? One was the ants decided to pick on one healthy stalk of wheat and hammer it until they got it. Or two, this particular stalk of wheat, for whatever reason, got damaged, and the Ants are like the garbage collectors, and they're cleaning up. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's number two more than number one. Right. It's always like that with pests. So likewise with the parasites, if your immune system is strong, if your defenses are vigorous, then they don't find it as easy to uh, to nest in to connect. When my sister was growing up, she had, and I'm talking now in the 12 to 16 year old range, she suffered a lot from migraines and headaches. Yes. And, and it never occurred to me, I mean, I never noticed this before, that uh, the sulfur could be a reason for that. Um, it could. Well, you know, a migraine is an inflammatory event. And of course, uh, 12 to 16, that's the uh, onset of uh, puberty hormonal changes that's, you know, women are complicated uh, creatures. And each of these events, which is uh, puberty or onset of menstruation, and then pregnancy, because with every pregnancy, first the menstruation stops, and then after the pregnancy, it has to start again. And then finally, at the end of the menstruation, you know, the parent of the menopause, all of these things essentially change women from being more like a man who doesn't menstruate to being back to a woman who does. And so it's, it's complicated and it causes or it's fraught with the possibility for, for trouble. And that's why you see uh, some type of illnesses are more common with women. And migraine is definitely one of those. And, uh, and so is fibromyalgia. Anyway, yeah. so the sulfur in our groups, don't we? Yeah, so to tie it back together, the sulfur then, of course, is uh, helping this because it helps the immune system and helps the connective tissue and all of the other bits that are involved in this complex dance of health versus not health. Well, what about uh, focus or hyperactivity, depression, mood swings, ADD, all those sort of... Uh... Well, and so the ADD is more common in boys, right? The hyperactivity is more common in boys. And that's, that's how their organism deals with or responds to these, um, especially autism, 
which is on the spectrum or the autistic spectrum includes anything from ADD through Asperger's to out and out, just massive trouble. All of that is includes or is predicated on the health of the muco mucosal linings in the gut. So if we have a healthy gut that's well able to defend itself against uh, external influences, you can maintain health. But as soon as the microbial terrain caves in and the, uh, the permeability sets in, leaky gut essentially equals leaky brain. And so whatever's going down in the gut that's not right will affect the brain. And you, you have this process called demyeli, or my, I can't even say it, myelinization, meaning that the myelin sheath of the nerves is getting damaged. And so we have issues in uh, motor control, and it also can happen in the brain, where we start having issues with ability to choose, ability to focus. It's, to an autistic person, it seems as though you were playing five radio stations at the same volume at the same time. It's really difficult for them to choose what to focus on. Like the regular brain is able to just direct its attention on something. Like you could pick the one conversation in a busy cocktail hour somewhere and stay with it. But for them, that's a near impossibility. And that's why you see them uh, trying to distract themselves with some body ticks or covering their ears, closing their eyes, humming to themselves and, and worse. Anyway, I'm just getting into a sidebar here. Um, sulfur helps the gut, which then helps the brain. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that sums it up. We've covered all the major diseases. We've covered all the major chronic uh, problems people have. And if you don't have enough sulfur in your diet, maybe this is one of the areas that you should be taking a really strong look at. So, Martin, before uh, we wrap it up, have you got any any last comments you want to leave us with? Um, this is one of the basic things. It's very affordable. And it's underreported and not, not well known. And it's, it's one of the most wonderful things. You can uh, ask me more questions if you want. You can find us at www.life-enthusiast.com and by phone at 866-543-3388. Thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you a lot. You've been watching the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.